الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحب ربنا ويرضى يا ربي لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك عظيم سلطانك وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله بلغ الرسالة وأدى الأمانة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في سبيل ربه حتى أتاه اليقين اللهم اجزيه عنا وعن والدينا وعن الإسلام والمسلمين خير ما جازيت به نبيا عن قومه ورسولا عن أمته اللهم أحنا على سنته وتوفنا على ملته وأولدنا حوضه واسقنا من يده الشريفة شربة هنيئة لا نظمأ بعدها أبدا ثم أما بعد My dear respected brothers and sisters um, This is the last Jumu'ah in this blessed month of Ramadan so may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us our siyam and qiyam and ibadat and sadaqat. And talking about sadaqat, we all know now those who did not pay yet the cattle filter, uh, this is the time to seriously think about paying it before Eid. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sahabi ajma'een said that if it's paid before Eid, then it is zakah maqbula. And if it's paid after Eid, then it is one of the so many sadaqat you may give. That's not the very specific sadaqat al-fitr that we should pay towards the end of the month. The word zakah or sadaqah that are used uh, synonymously and they have the same meaning, zakat al-fitr or sadaqat al-fitr, they, they refer to the same thing. And the word zakat, in fact, which is one of the five pillars of Islam, has two meanings in Arabic language. One is a tatheer or purification. Right? Um, so the Katul Fitr and the Katul Mal purifies our wealth and also purifies ourselves from selfishness and stinginess. It's a purification for our hearts and also purification for our money and wealth. That's the Katul Mal that is due once a year in most of, most of the cases. But the Katul Fitr does not have a particular relationship to the amount of wealth we have. The cattle filter actually is zakat related to our soul, our nafs, our existence, and our children and, and the people that we sponsor. The cattle abdan, they call it the cattle abdan, the zakat of the bodies and the zakat of the uh, heads uh, within the family. Interestingly, some scholars actually talked about the fetus. What about the pregnant woman? Can we count this baby as a person that we should actually pay the count of? A lot of discussion among the ulama, and the majority say, no, as long as it's not born, it's not wajib. But if someone wants to give the count on behalf of the unborn baby, that's even better. And there's a deep meaning to this, that we actually should be thankful for our own provision, our own existence and also to appreciate the people we have, our um, spouses and our children and whomever we are sponsoring. Interestingly, not only wealthy Muslims should pay this, even the poor Muslims should pay Zakat al-Fitr. And the nisab of Zakat al-Fitr is if you have enough food in the day of Eid and the night of Eid, that makes you wealthy enough. And the question is why? If someone has enough food for one day, in our custom uh, these days, we consider this person to be very poor. Because alhamdulillah, we have more food to cover more days. And the point here, some ulama actually refer to this idea that Islam encourages all Muslims, even the poor Muslims, to learn the meaning of giving. Even poor Muslims, they should also taste the sweetness of giving. To learn how to give, not only how to take. Yes, they are poor, but at the same time, they may think about those who are perhaps poorer than them. Those who are more mean than them. To be thankful for what you have, and to give those who have less. Everyone has something to offer. Everyone should think about giving. Never think of yourself as... Uh, comparing to others that are much uh, poorer than others. Islam wants us to learn how to give even in the time of hardship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised those who give in the time of ease and the time of hardship. 
الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء. Those who spend in ease and in hardship, even when they don't have so much, even when they are need, they also reach out to those who have less than them and give them. So no one should ever think that I have nothing to offer, I have nothing to give. When the Prophet وسلم, asked the Sahaba to contribute before the um, uh, expedition of the book, fighting against the Byzantines, and some of the Sahaba came with a handful of date, and some Munafiqeen made fun of them. He said, look at this. And Muhammad is preparing an army to fight the Byzantines and, and asking people to donate, and here's someone bringing a handful of date. What would this handful of date do? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned these munafiqeen and praised those who are giving what they have. They don't have anything except the very, very little. And they are making fun of them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah will make fun of these munafiqeen. So these fuqara, these poor sahaba, they brought a handful of date, whatever they can give. And this Sahabi will say, well, what would this handful they do? Preparing an army. But he knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to see. Allah looks at your heart. Allah looks at your heart. And Aisha radiallahu anha understood this. And she used to put some perfume in the coins before she gives it. And they asked her, why do you do that? She said, because I know this money goes in the hand of Allah before it goes to the hand of the poor people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look necessary to the amount, but He looks at the level of sincerity. We love money, no doubt. It's part of human nature. But when we give, this is a testimony that we love Allah more. We need the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we give away something we love so much to get in return something that's more precious than money. That is the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, the cattle fit reminds us that there are those who are less fortunate than us and we need to learn how to give in the time of ease and the time of hardship. And also the ulama talked about the hadith of the Prophet who described the cattle fit as tuhratun lissa'im wa tu'matun lilmasakin. Two main objectives of the cattle fit. One is purification of the fasting person. Tuhratun lissa'im. And other narration with the lawi or rafat. Our fasting is not perfect. We cannot claim that our fasting was perfect. Because the real understanding of fasting is the fasting of all our bodies and our senses from committing sins. The fasting of the tongue is not to backbite or to lie. The fasting of the eye is not to look at haram things. And so on and so forth. And that's why no one can claim that my 30 days of fasting are perfect. I have not committed any sin. Our fasting is not perfect. And the cattle fit comes to purify our fasting so it goes up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as pure and clean. So, tuhratun lissa'im. We need to give. It's not only the poor need to receive, but we also in need to give our zakah to purify our fasting. وَتُعْمَةٌ لِلْمَسَاكِينَ This is the second objective. تُعْمَةٌ لِلْمَسَاكِينَ food for the masakin. So the day of Eid is supposed to be the day of happiness for everyone. And the Prophet ﷺ said that everyone should be happy in the day of Eid. Imam Abu Hanifa and other great scholars in Islam, they said, you can give zakat al fitr to Dhimmis. Dhimmis refer to the non-Muslim minorities living in the Muslim country. Called Dhimmis, those who have covenant to be protected and to, be, to live in dignity. Zakat al-mal should only give it, be given to Muslims, absolutely. But Zakat al-fitr should or ca could be given also to Dhimmis or non-Muslims if they are in need. And the idea here is that everybody should be happy in the day of Eid. We should try our best to make everyone happy, even non-Muslims, our neighbors. They also should feel the happiness of the day of Eid. It is one of our traditions, part of our ibadah to look after our neighbors, even non-Muslims. We should ensure on that day everybody is happy and they have at least enough food. And there's another important point that I just want to touch upon very quickly, 
There's some technicalities of how to read the text or the saying of the Prophet وسلم, and also concern the objective of Sharia. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he uh, uh, prescribed the Qatul Fitr, he said, it is a sound, uh, min tam or min sha'ir. It should be given as sa'ah. The word sa'ah actually refers to a specific measure. It's not a pound or a kilogram. It's almost around three kilograms. Almost. Almost. But he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentioned the common food at that time, date, or sha'ir, barely or Zabib, Raisin, and other stuff he mentioned Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But now, of course, obviously, if you go to a poor person, lock his door and give him burly, two pounds of burly, what, what, what do you do with this? If everybody in the community like, went to poor people, then they would have piles of burly and, and, and date, what would they do with it? So that's why Imam Abu Hanifa and others, they said that you can give the value of this. Now, some ulama, they stick with the literal understanding or literal saying of the Prophet Sallallahu And they also quote that stormah, they say it's food, so it has to be food. This is ibadah and you cannot you know, play with the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu But obviously, Imam Abu Hanifa looked at the meaning, the objective. The objective is to make them happy. But now, it's difficult for us when we give food and it's difficult for the poor to receive food. It's easier for everybody and more useful to everyone actually to give money and they can buy food or they can buy clothes or buy medicine, buy whatever they need. And this is another example of how flexible Islam is, our Sharia is. We have to look at the text and we have also to consider the objective of the text. And the vast majority of Muslims around the world now they even the non-Hanafi Muslim states, they followed now Abu Hanifa's opinion because it makes a lot of sense. Imam Malik and Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal, they said it has to be paid a day or two before Eid, not earlier than this. Not earlier, because it's related to Eid. Because the Qatul Fitr and other narrations, the Qatul Fitr min Ramadan, uh, according to Imam Bukhari's uh, title. But Imam al-Shafi'i said could be given any day in Ramadan. And, and, and some Hanafi scholars should, they said that can be even paid even before Ramadan. As long as you have the intention to fast Ramadan and to give the zakah, zakat al-fitr earlier. But for those who um, um, think that it has to be paid one or two days only before Ramadan, they should actually make sure that it treats the poor people before that. In other words, if you want to give it to a zakat committee or a, 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 an organization that you have to get early enough in order for this money to reach the poor people a day or two before before al -Aid. And talking about giving, about zakat, Ramadan is the month of giving. Ramadan is the month of generosity. They describe Rasulullah as the most generous of all people. And he's even more generous in the month of Ramadan. When Jibreel alayhi salam comes and read our Quran, review our Quran with him. And this is exactly what we do. We read the whole Quran during the month of Ramadan. In Taraweeh and out of Taraweeh. So the more Quran we read and study, the more we should give. And this, this is what we observe all the time. People tend to give more in the month of Ramadan. So this is the last week of the month. And this is the opportunity for us all to give and to give more. And remember one thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised that the more you give, the more you receive. In the Hadith al-Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibn Adam, anfiq, unfiq alayk. Spend, you will be spent upon. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa made an oath that your money will never decrease as a result of sadaqah. Sadaqah increases your wealth and your blessing and your health. So never think that when you give in sadaqah, your money will decrease. It will in fact increase. And those who give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they understand this and they have seen this in their life. They give and money comes to them from ways that they've never expected. Another important thing that we should also remember is to remember our masjid. 
Masajid in America is the number is increasing. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Ameen. I referred to the study of Hassan Bag Bagley in 2000 and 2010 when he calculated or uh, counted the, the amount of mosques in 2000 that were 1,200 mosques in America. In 2010, he published the second study, 2011. He said in 2010 we have 2,100. And now, Allah Alam, if the study will continue, the number is growing and increasing. It all starts with small efforts and the community generously donate and give. And this message becomes Islamic centers and becomes bigger institutions that provide services to so many different segments of the community and for Muslims and for non-Muslims. Islam is growing. Many are very unhappy with this fact. Muhammad is the number one name in England. And a new uh, minister has been hired, a Muslim minister, <coughs> interior minister of England now is Muslim. And five or six main cities in England, the mayors of five main cities in England are Muslim mayors. And here in America is the same, the same thing. Islam is growing. It's because of the sense of community, the sense of ummah. We are very diverse communities coming from different parts of the world. But in the end of the day, what brings us here and now in this place is because we believe that Salatul Jum'ah is obligatory upon us. We believe in Ramadan. We believe in Eid. This is what brings us, this is what makes this community strong. It's alhamdulillah, it's not up to a government or a political entity that calls people to come together. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the call of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the 7th century. We are responding to this call. We come here despite our differences because we believe in the end of the day we are one community. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is good enough to bring us together. Maybe we are different in everything else. We are different perhaps in many things, in many other things. Our views, our opinions, our madahib, our uh, trends, our understanding of Islam. But the beauty about Islam is that Islam gives us foundational principles that brings us together. The concept of consensus, in ijma, is one of the most powerful ideas in Islam. That Islam, despite the differences, Islam makes us one community. And despite the political upheavals and conflict, we are still Muslims. And Islam is growing because of that. Yes, of course, some pioneers are there. Leaders, imams, scholars. But these individuals cannot do so much by themselves. We have to give the credit to the community. It is the Muslim community collectively around the world preserve Islam. They preserve Islam because they fast every Ramadan and they pray Jum'ah and they pray Eid and give their zakah and they make their hajj when they can. This is what makes Islam always fresh and strong. No matter how much we are connected or are close to Islam, all these basic things makes us Muslims. So Alhamdulillah we are growing. Our community in particular is growing. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Despite the differences and difference of opinions, we are growing. In number, we are growing in activities, we are growing in space, and that is part of the natural growth of Muslims everywhere in the world. We are growing naturally. Praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who knows who is contributing sincerely for his sake and for the future of this Islam in this country. Never underestimate any contribution you give, because whatever seeds you plant today, Allah knows who is going to harvest this, these seeds. Never underestimate any contribution. And as you all know, the Masajid in America runs based on the donation of the people. And our Masjid is not an exception. It also relies on the donation of people like you. We all benefit from these facilities. And as we are trying to expand, we will need more contribution. So brothers and sisters, think about giving your masjid and giving for 
not only for the expansion, but also for the uh, daily expenses. Message is growing, the activists are growing. ISD hired um, uh, two youth coordinators. Alhamdulillah, and inshallah soon, in September, this upcoming September, we will start a new youth activities. I will be heavily involved in this educational part, but we have also so many other activities, not only educational, but to be educational, and also we have sports activities, and as well as life skills, field trips, and camps to our youth. This will start in September, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm working with the uh, newly hired um, youth coordinator, um, and, and uh, Saturday school and Sunday school and the educational committee to start this activity in September, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are seriously thinking about building IHD Quran Institute where everyone, adults, men and women, children, youth, boys and girls, they can uh, enroll in classes of uh, Quran, teaching Quran and, and the read and hef and so on and so forth. So there are plenty of ideas but these ideas and these activities and these services needs contribution. So please consider, con uh, consider uh, giving generously to your masjid for the operation and for that. So many activities that already exist and the activities that we are, inshallah, going to have in the near future. So please uh, g donate generously and give your masjid. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all your good deeds. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-khalq al-musaleen, Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in, inna Allah wa malaikatahu salluna ala al-nabiyya, ya ayuhu al-lazina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi Muhammad, kama sallayt ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi Ibrahim, wa barik ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi Muhammad, kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi Ibrahim, fil alameen, innaka hamidun mjeel, ibadullah, taqullah wa ati'u, inna Allah wa يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وأنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغض يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ويذكر الله أكبر الله يعلم ما تصنعون اللهم إن نسألك الهدى والتقى والعفاف والغنى اللهم إن نسألك رزقا طيبا وعملا متقبلا اللهم أصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا وأصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معاشنا وأصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معادنا اللهم اجعل الحياة زيادة لنا في كل خير واجعل الموت راحة لنا من كل شر يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك نستغيث فأصلح لنا شأننا كله اللهم لا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ولا إلى أحد من الناس يا رب العالمين اللهم تقبل منا صيامنا وقيامنا وركوعنا وسجودنا وصدقاتنا وسائر أعمالنا اللهم اجعلنا في شهرنا هذا من اعتقائك من النار واجعلنا من المقبولين الفائزين اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين في ليلة القدر اللهم ادخلنا الجنة من غير حساب اللهم إن سألك في الدوس الأعلى من الجنة من غير سابقة عذاب ولا مناقشة حساب يا رب العالمين صلى الله عليه وسلم محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وقم الصلاة